Okay, let's try again. Okay, so let's try, uh, can you start with two, um, march away seven here, open A.
going to stop you because you did more than 12, but very well. Okay, let's do our blur. And actually, let's start with two plus two today, just so we can see more. I think it's, is it easier to play with the shorter bow? Yeah, okay. So we'll just keep that shorter bow for a while, okay? Good, good. You really 
and then you can do short Okay, so that is that. Then we go a bunch of pages. And the next one are thirds. So we'll do the, the first exercise separate. And then we're going to do three stops and three squares. And... all exercises with the thirds and then we go to six so we take the first six station separate two stops and two squared and then you can do four and four stops and four thirds okay just the usual way and that's all we'll do for now because we'll, we'll move ahead to the things that are a little bit more interesting and let's take your portrait thank you and you bring With both variations, or just the center? Um, uh, I'm just looking at the lyrics. Okay, okay, great. So let's hear that. The G was great, but then watch, he just stayed. He just stayed in fifth position. Good. Now, what if I think we're going to have to come up around a little bit more? Can we just play the. That's right. Good. Now, if you want to feel comfortable that you can rest your hand against this side here.
remember I was just doing this the first time. Right, so this is a three. Again, measure trills, and we have 12 beats per measure, which really means what? Six. Well, that would be six, but one, the big beat. Four. Right, four. It's like six, eight, which is easy in two, but it's 12, eight. So, what? We're going to play that. We stop the bow on the new string. And I go down bow to the tip. I stop the bow on the new string. So we just try this first measure. Mostly I need you to remember to stop bow. And, of course, finger before bow, that's huge. And this little note here is down bow to the tip. Okay? Down. again so long Thank you. 
to it, and we're gonna really get to the. Let me show you here. So, slowly. 
do your separate bag, okay? Separate bag. And you think for the resonance on each thing. So if you want to go on, you can. Okay, good. And did you start with the Mozart today? Or which? Uh, I used it first. Okay. Oh, and you, uh, okay. Oh, I see, there were two pieces in there. Okay, well, let's start with me. Now, what other pieces in Mozart do you know? Yep, you know a sonata. That's a good start. Um, uh, so we're going to start a listening with three for Mozart. Um, he wrote 41 symphonies. So, you know, if you just listen to uh, 39, 40, and 41, you know, for a start, that would be great. And then we would go backward. Uh, well, he wrote 17 violin sonatas. Um, you can, you know, go, any of them are beautiful. So just every day listen to a different violin sonata. He wrote many piano sonatas because he was a violinist, but mainly a pianist. Um, he wrote 10 magnificent string quartets called the Haydn Quartet, string quartet, and he wrote piano trios, and he wrote one thing that he loved to do more than anything else, and that was what? I'll give you a hint. It has singing in it, opera. scenery, yes, operas, operas. So, you know, you've got, you can just go online, go to YouTube, and, and just find a wonderful recording. Why don't you start with Magic Flute? And have you heard of that? Mm -hmm. And then Don Giovanni, that's my all-time favorite. And uh, Mirrors of Figaro. Um, and just enjoy. Their stories are really um uh contemporary so kind of some of them are a little silly but the, the music is gorgeous and and why do you think he loved opera i mean we we just talked about what do you have in opera you have singing, you have solo singing parts, you have duos, trios, quartets, you have an orchestra, you have a, what else? What else is in opera? A lot of stage. Mm -hmm. Everything with a stage, props, scenery, lighting. And opera has a what? A story. And in that story, you have people, uh, and they all have a different character. And, and when we play anything of Mozart, it's all about the character. And we can understand the characters better if we have heard some operas, if we really know some operas. So what we're going to do, we're going to um, uh, play a little bit today, but we're going to start our opera scenario um, with this piece here. And we'll make a picture of what you think all of these notes are meaning. Okay? Okay, here we go. Okay, here, sorry, let me back up. So Mozart is a classical composer. Mm -hmm. And, and, uh, in general, classical composers wrote first movements in what form? Sonata. Yes, sonata, allegro form, exactly. And just like your sonata that you played, right? Mm -hmm. So do you remember the parts of the sonata, allegro form? Mm, first position, mm -hmm. second position, third, 
good. Exactly. And the recap. And then we'll identify where all those places are uh -huh. in this piece. Uh -huh. Okay, here we go. Then we have your first question mark, right? So this is to the tip, and we're going to play this. We're going to play this as a turn. So now uh, we're going to add a knock slog here. Uh, you know what a knock slog is? Okay, so we're first going to play this. Okay, one other important thing you need to know. In Mozart's time, they could not write a quadrature on the beat, so they got away with this silly rule and uh, by making their quadratures into grace notes. So Mozart was very clear uh, about the value of the eighth note the quadrature that he wanted. So in this case, it is a, what kind of note that is? Eighth note, right. So we have two equal eighth notes there. Can we play without any of the ornamentation? Right, so we're gonna play one and then a two on this bird. So we should be a one here. Down two, two and then left a one. Ba. That's it. So play it really well. One, good. And Mozart's classical. So we have our strong beats and where are we beats? And our strong beats are what? And then the next drum beat is? Three. Yes. So one, two, three, four. Exactly. So here's our strong, strong. And always the first note of the slur, unless otherwise indicated, has more stress than the second note. Good. So we'll play. Then a two. More. Good. And we can more or less, we can move the bow. Good. Now we're going to add the, the trill, which is. Which is going to be a turn instead of a trill. Good, good. Okay, so each one. Good. So we can't distort the rest of this measure. So the turn comes on the second eighth note, sixteenth note. Good. Uh, that's it. Do it a few times till it's comfortable. Two, two. Good. Good. We'll move the bow a little faster. Good. 
and then uzi. Then we're gonna release the bow. Rest, rest, rest. And we'll feel the bow. To the tip here. Rest, two, three. Now, in the last week that you forgot, no sorry. So you'll be missing to your video and take notes. The, if the note before the trill note is the same note, we're going to start the note from the top note. For example, here we'll start from the E. If the note before is a third above, we'd probably start from the top note. If it's a different note, we'll start from the note. Nobody knows exactly, and there are no clear-cut rules, but here we'll start from the top note because the purpose of the trill is to create tension, excitement. So if I've already heard the D, it's pretty boring to hear it again. So two, three, and and good, down, good, good, and then the rhythm and. Well, for now, we'll, we'll play without the dot. Bust down. Good, so, but don't rush. Good, now, again, we want to stay in the middle of the bow. And then we go from triplet to, to fourth, right? Two, three, good. And then we have to, we're keeping in our body the subdivision of the eighth note. One, one, two, three. One, two, three. Good. Now, the fingering, you can stay four, then extension, three. Extension, four, good. Above. Good. Now, because the note before is the same note, we'll start the trill from the top note. Now, then in this classical form, we have C. Uh, so what you played here, that's C number one. And then here, uh, right where we landed here, this is C number two here. And then C number three is right here. Okay? Just so you would get a picture of how he's putting all of his pieces together here. So then let's start here. Good. So, and we're going to just really so watch your feet. Make it comfy. And sit, sit, sit. Good. Now, see, now, do you see the grace note is written as an eighth note? So, we'll play as a... And then we can take we can take the bow off and let it sing again. And down. Good. Six and four. Good. Okay, so we're, we're still one. Two, three, four.
rest and good. And then we'll leave the bow there. Rest and mm. Exactly correct. Five, 
Now we want to save the bow because because I'm going to be in the middle of the bow. So I'm going to save the bow here. Again, I would roll so we start from the string. Save, save, good. Save, save your bow here. So you want to find the best place to play. See here is not so good. Not so good. So there's a really specific place. to all of them. Uh, so so he had to make some really brilliant passages, otherwise people were going to be bored. So here... gets a little trickier. So we start from the string and it comes off.
to note fa. This turn, these are four notes, and they come on this 16th note. One, two, three, rest. Two, three. And you know that good. Good. So. This is a uh, up bow here and down. Good. And that's the end of the development. And here we have the... Okay. So let's stop here. And um, did I give you the GUI to bend for today? Okay. So let me get the GUI to bend it to you so you can take a look at it. And then you can um, start writing your own. Okay? Questions? No. Is it fun? Yeah. yeah.